This is Margie Stagmeyer's life's work. She's trying to make the two sides of this monopoly board fair, but she says it doesn't happen quickly and it's not easy, but she's showing Atlanta how it can be done. It was so common sense. I mean, I just got it. I understand what it takes to win, how easy it was to collect $200 in pass go and how to invest. Winning at Monopoly was easy for Margie Stagmeyer. But nine years into building her own board, she knows the game is not fair. So how much time do you have? <laughs> Margie says the struggle starts with suspicion. In a place where crime runs rampant, this landlord first must prove she's willing to take a chance. A lot of apartment communities around Atlanta and in, in the country, I say, are in a crisis of trust. So you really need to build the trust with your tenants and make them work with you to be good community stewards, take care of the property, and basically trust their neighbors. They had to convince investors to commit $11 million to buy a blighted and crime-ridden apartment complex, knowing they could make more money elsewhere. For every percentage interest that we would have to give our investors, we have to raise our rent about 60 to $70. So think about it, if, if our investors said, well, we want a 10% return, well, we, we would have to raise our rents $500 a month. To, in order to pay those returns to our investors. They keep the rent around $875 a month for their townhomes, meaning their investors get back a 2% profit. We got a lot of pushback when we first started. You know, I like to say there's community investors and there's commodity investors. We're, we like community investors. Despite the challenges, she still believes revitalizing neighborhoods and building safe communities should be like that monopoly game common sense. Actually, I was an average, maybe a little bit below average student, okay, because, but I'm a global thinker. I can see big picture and figure out how to basically align resources to achieve the big picture. She says she wants to teach other people how to get that same big picture into their own neighborhoods. Our goal here is simply to have other landlords embrace the model and bring that to their community. Others are just visiting, including an Alabama mayor looking to see how her plan works in action. This community is now full and there's a wait list to get in. Oh, it makes me happy, but, but they should be. I mean, why shouldn't you be happy to be home? Why shouldn't you invest in your community? Why shouldn't you want to be in a community that's thriving? And to us, that's what's missing from a lot of these marginalized community is the, the heartbeat. She says her heart is at the center of everything she does. Oh, I'm going to heaven. <laughs> that's my goal is I, I wanna get to heaven. I mean, cause when you get down to it, you can't take all this with you. So, but you would like to leave some sort of small legacy behind. They just started a monthly breakfast to help teach landlords across America how to recreate this model in their own communities. Margie also wrote a book documenting her experiencing turning the 244 unit complex around. It's called Blighted and it will be published in June.